Hello Terraria Enthusiasts, my name is James and welcome back to the Calamity Mod. So in today's episode I'm doing things a little bit differently because we're actually not jumping straight into Doggo for a simple reason. And drumroll please, I've already beaten him. That's right, so in yesterday's episode I filled it with so much frustration and salt. I don't think it was a very enjoyable episode to watch, I'm not gonna lie. And I even kind of knew that because when making it, I took an extra day because I knew that my uh, my moaning and whining wouldn't really translate well uh, to everyone watching. And I look back at it and I'm like, oh, no, stop. So in today's episode, I went ahead and actually made sure that I analyzed each one of your comments. I took out all the different elements I thought would actually work for me. And I went ahead and did it. I did one fight today, just the one. So one since the previous episode. And I beat it. Now, a lot of the things I said in yesterday's episode, I still kind of believe in. I don't like the new system of lines. I do think it's a little bit messy and it kind of relies on the Rod of Discord a little bit too much. But if that's going to be in the game for a while, don't worry. I've got an accessory that makes this fight an absolute easy fight. It's like too easy now. And it's this. This accessory right here. The Astral Arcanum. This thing negates the God Slayer debuff. The God Slayer debuff is essentially what ends this fight. I was moaning because I was getting hit by lasers and it would end the fight, right? This thing will stop your health from dropping so that you even get to that point. So, thank God for this accessory. I love it. I absolutely love it. And apparently you can uh, use it to teleport or something like that. What does that say? Press O to teleport and uh, toggle the UI. It doesn't work for me. That's all right. So I have done the fight now. It's over. Let's see what we get. So we got a Fab Soul summons an Alicorn. Woo! It's from uh, My Little Pony, right? I don't know which uh, My Little Pony this is, but very nice. Very nice. Alicorn, you beat DOG while drunk. You are truly fabulous. Ooh, look at that. That's weird. It's like I'm faster than my actual grappling hook. That's kind of cool. Right, I did beat it while drunk. I'm very impressed. Uh, I also, um, well, I got some more of these. I got more of these and some more stuff. All right, let's open up this treasure bag. Bam. Okay. Ooh, I thought this was going to be a bow at first. And I was like, huh, that's weird. It doesn't show the ammo, but it's actually a, a boomerang. We got a nebulous core, which is great. 10% increased damage summons the floating nebulous stars to protect you. You have a 10% chance to survive an attack that would have killed you. If this effect activates, you'll be healed by 100 HP. We also got the Staff of the Mech Worm, which is really cool as well. So we take a Summoner's Combi, which is this one. Get a little bit bigger. Very nice. I like it. And we also got the Cosmolite Bars. And the Cosmolite Bars go on to make some really awesome looking uh, stuff. So let's take a little look at that. Let's uh, reset the time. What's the time? Quarter to nine. Right, okay. Let's. <laughs> That's a reference to... Um... God, what's it called? Don't hug me, I'm scared. And that song gets in my head all the time. It's the line that goes, don't hug... Oh, wait, it goes, what's the time? It's quarter to nine, time to have a bath. <laughs> okay, anyway. So I have all of the uh, the ingredients to make myself an Elysian Tracer. And I kind of like that. You've got the core of the Blood God. So many people left me comments. I don't know if it's changed, guys. I don't know where you were getting it from. But I got so many comments saying, make the sponge. God damn it. No, you can't make the sponge at this point. You have to uh, You have to actually beat DOG to get the spongy materials. And look at the rest of it. There is some great stuff here. You've got God Slayer armor. So this is actually an increase buff to the Frost Moon and the Pumpkin Moon. So we could totally make some new armor. You can also make the silver armor, but I never know which one's the best. Well, I guess this one uses engulfant flavors, and that's from uh, that's from Bumblebird. Huh, okay. Never mind. I don't fully know what I'm, I'm talking about here. You've got the Dreoden's Forge. So do these... Uh, you need a Dreoden's Forge for this. So you need to do these two events to actually get it. So that's something to do. You've also got the Alpha Ray, an absolute classic, the anti-material thing. The uh, Celestus, I like that. The Cosmic... Im Im a materializer? I materializer? Cool. There is so much to actually make here. I love it. So I guess we'll start with the pumpkin moon and the frost moon. And then we'll uh we'll be able to get some extra stuff and we'll make the forge. Okay. Right, can I make a pumpkin moon? A naughty pumpkin. There we go. Well actually it's just called a uh, a moon medallion, and then I'll make a naughty present. I can't make one of those, so I might be able to buy one. We shall see. 
But yeah, I really do appreciate all of the comments. It really helped me out. I saw some people kind of bash me and they were they were kind of like acting like I was um I was being terrible to really like pad out the series. Not in the slightest. I was being terrible because I like to make daily videos and I don't always have enough time to like work on a boss for a couple of days and then make that into a video, if that makes sense. So for example, like I've had series in the past where they don't last very long because I actually spend all of this time off camera doing all of the uh, behind the scenes stuff. But with this series, I've tried to like really pull that back a little bit. That's why I include all of my fails and such. Right. So we're looking for the, um, whatever it's called. I can't remember. The uh, fuel, nightmare fuel. That's it. Right. So yeah, in terms of like accessories and such though, that one that I just made, uh, the one that I spoke about here, it does, it makes the fight such a, uh, not a joke, but very easy. Because it is the God Infernal um, debuff that you get that really messes with your character. Because you lose 250 health very slowly, but, uh, but also kind of rapidly at the same time. So that's why I find that to be, like, really hard to deal with. And, um, and once you've made that accessory, it really does change things. So it made me moan less about the lines, if that makes sense. So does this nightmare fuel drop from these guys, or is it only from the uh, the pumpkin moon dudes? I think it's only the pumpkin moon dudes. I kind of like this though because it gives you a bit of an excuse to actually go back and do this uh, this part of the uh, the game again. Because otherwise, I wouldn't have done it. You know what I mean? Okay, I do think it's from the uh, the the, the, mo the pumpkin dudes. Okay, let's work our way through. So I've got a bit of a funny story for you guys today. So I actually had a house inspection today because I rent my house. You know, I'm only 21. Nobody can afford to buy houses these days, all right? It's a millennial thing. But, um, but I had a house inspection because when you rent, you have an, uh, an inspection every like couple of months or like maybe even a year if you're lucky. And, um, and one of the things th that has with my agreement, my house agreement, oh man, I'm kind of gutted by that. At least the fact that you can actually, uh, you can respawn or whatever. So, um, <laughs> so one of the things in my agreement is that I can't have pets. Now, as many of you may notice from watching my vlogs, a cat pops up once or twice. Now, that actually isn't my cat. It's my neighbor's cat. But my neighbor's cat basically finds its way into my house whenever it possibly can because it's such a super chill cat. It's a really ace cat. And, um, and so the house inspection starts and usually you'll have somebody from the estate agents pop around. They'll take a few photos for the landlord to see. Because, you know, landlords never come to their own house viewings because they're all multi-millionaires, you know what I mean? Um, but anyway, so uh, so I enter the door and it's not the landlord, it's not the, um, the estate agent, it's the actual landlord himself. And with that, as I open the door, the cat runs straight in. And already he's got this, like, horrific look on his face, like, what have I just witnessed, you know? That's a real breach of the, uh, the, the contract right there, right in front of him. And I look at him and I'm like... You know, before I can even introduce myself, I'm like, that's not mine, I swear. And then the cat walks in, and it gets, it walks over to the couch, it jumps up, and it just sits down, like, dead cozy in that. And I'm like, no, 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 that's really, really not mine. And he's like, are you sure? Because it's come right in. And I'm like, no, I swear. I was like, after you've looked around, you can see I've got nothing for a cat. It's not my cat, it's my neighbor's cat. And he's like, hmm, well, all right then, all right. So that was my house view, and so that was like off to a really bad start, although the rest of it was fine, you know. They have to check that essentially you're not doing anything uh, to damage the house, which is fine because I don't. I don't do anything to damage my house. I like try and treat it like a, uh, a palace, honestly. I keep it as like possibly nice as I can. So that was that was how I started my day, and then after that I met, uh, I met Python for some coffee, and that was good. And then we went and looked at cars, because my car is... Uh, yeah, it needs a repair that, like, nobody says it needs, and it's just so frustrating. I've had it for a long time now, so I've, I've been looking at cars, but I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to go with yet. Oh, okay. Well, I've got a few of this Nightmare Fuel, so I think what I'll do now, guys, is I'll transition to the Frost Moon. I'll collect a bit more of this. I'll transition to the Frost Moon, and we can go and get ourselves some endothermic energy as well. All right, Frost Moon it is. I uh, I needed silk. That's why I needed to get a naughty present. So I had to uh, slap down a, a loom. So I'm trying to think of like anything else I've been up to. So you know that I was talking about VR in yesterday's episode. Well, I actually kept my VR setup up because 
I basically like store it away most of the year because VR is very fun, but not a lot comes out for it. And, uh, and I was so excited because I was like, right, I'm going to go back and I'm going to finish a game called Super Hot. If you haven't heard of Super Hot before, oh, wow, it's so good. Especially as a VR game. I've never played the uh, the original, which is like the 2D version of it. But um, but I left off a couple of months ago on a really difficult level. And I was like, this is hard. And I was storing away my VR. And I was like, right, one day I'm going to come back and do this level. And I'm going to continue Super Hot because it's so good. And, uh, and I had to start from fresh. So I was playing for about an hour. And I got up to the super hard level. And I was like, great, okay, this is going to be awesome. So I managed to do this uh, super hard level. And then the game ended. Like, I was good. I was just getting back into it, and I thought this was maybe, like, the beginning of the game still. I didn't realize that the game is only meant to be played for, like, 40 minutes to an hour. Ah, oh, I was devastated. And then I, I went to research if they ever did extra levels or DLC. Turns out they never did. And it's, it's scary because it's one of the best VR games that's ever been around. It's been out for a long time. Oh, man, the people that make Super Hot need to go back and add more levels. It's so good. I tell you what, we really get spoiled with Terraria. Terraria have so many uh, free updates, especially over the fact of like, especially considering it's, been, it's a seven-year-old game at this point. I just, I'm so used to like reading up about a game and expecting like a massive update to come out. But it's surprising because not a lot of games actually do it and I have to like proper remind myself about that. I was gutted. Right, there we go. Ice Queen, this is what we need. Ice Queenie. Okay, this is a good little... Uh, Set up. I tell you what, considering this uh, this whole event has been buffed, this is not too challenging, and I really like that. Let me just get a bunch of these out for you. There you go, Ice Queen. I didn't use these during my fight. These are really good. Actually, I used them on um, Cygnus. When I do Cygnus during the uh, DOG fight, I kept using those because they're really good. All right, I don't know how much Endothermic I need. I imagine quite a bit. I got around 200 of the uh, the Halloween versions. And I'm hoping that's enough. Like, that's probably enough, right? So I'm just going to keep cracking on, seeing what I can get. And I guess we'll meet up in a minute. Because we're going to be making some cool stuff. Some definitely... It's funny because you get to DOG, and then you beat DOG. And then you get access to all of the weapons that make DOG a lot easier. So that's kind of cool, because obviously you've got to refight DOG a few times for, uh, for all of the armor sets and such. So I think in future episodes when we refight the DOG, it's going to be all right. Although, literally, I just swear by that accessory. If you've got that accessory, you're going to be all right. It's not that hard. It really is like, compared to the older AI, there's not a lot to learn once you negate Godslayer debuff. It really is just Godslayer that like makes the fight hard without it. It's really simple. I love it. Okay, 150. I'm going to change it to daytime now and, uh, and give that bit a rest. So, let's zoom it on in. Sorry, mobile users. <laughs> right, okay. Uh, let's dump all that away. Let's make... Uh... <laughs> I went to shoot the... Right, okay, never mind. Uh, Dreadun's Forge? Or Forge? I don't even know how to make it. I'm, I'm not even sure. Right, uh, okay. Forge. Let's see. So, you need... Ooh. All three of those and that. Okay, well, I can get those. So they are one, two, and three. And we'll dump those into there. And then we should be able to make a forge, hopefully. Yep, there we go. A Dreadon's forge. So that should combine all three of those now. So if I dump these, and I've already got the wings in there. Do I need to put that in as well? I don't know. Oh, I actually do not know. Can I make tracers? Let's have a little look here. I don't know what this makes, and I'm kind of confused. Which one? Am I using this one? Where did I put that? Oh, I put it in my inventory. Ah, snap. Okay. Right, so that upgrades to this. So these two combine to make the Asgardian Agis, and then they make the tracers. Okay. Cool. All right. One, two, three. So, Asgardian Agis. There we go. All right. Awesome. So, that will give you extra lots of stuff, actually. Grants a supreme holy dash used to ram enemies, end buffs. Cool. Okay. 
Now let's make the traces. Trackers. There we go. Bam. So this is our uh, accessory list as it stands. So we're super fast. And we look awesome. And, uh, and everything is golden. Let's make sure that's on. And that is on as well. And there we go. We look so cool. All right. We look, we look actually really good. So that's going to be up today's episode, guys. Thank you all for watching. And especially thank you for, uh, for sticking around with my moaning yesterday. I do apologize for it being uh, really unpleasant to watch. And uh, I'll work on that in the future. I probably won't. Right? <laughs> See you in the next one, guys. Peace.